A DC doctor made a medical breakthrough as the first doctor in the world to perform a procedure that's a huge improvement in deep vein thrombosis treatment. And that doctor is a Dr. Stephen Abramowitz, who is joining us today, chair of the vascular surgery at MedStar Health. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So before we talk about the breakthrough, let's talk about uh, deep vein thrombosis in the first place and how people might know if this is something that they're suffering from. Absolutely. So deep vein thrombosis occurs in over 400,000 Americans each year. And the most common symptoms are unilateral leg swelling, meaning one leg, pain, redness, fevers and temperature changes. Uh, and most of the time that swelling is a big indicator that there may be a DVT that's present. All right. So the swelling we're going to keep an eye out for. And should we, I mean, does pre-existing conditions impact this? Is there, you know, something we should be a lookout for just to kind of monitor ourselves? Great question. Uh, most people don't know the pre-existing condition they have that may lead to a blood clot to form. So it's best to get any sudden signs of swelling checked out at an urgent care or an emergency room site. So a lot of times, you know, we had heard this is the kind of thing where if you had a sedentary lifestyle, maybe you might be impacted by this. If you're not active, if you sit in long periods of time, am I on the right page here? Yeah, that's definitely one of the contributing factors. But for the most part, DVT can occur for a wide variety of reasons, including hypercoagulable disorders or disorders of the blood that may make somebody more likely to develop clots. Some cancers can predispose patients to developing clots. So thinking about it as a disease of the sedentary sometimes uh, takes away from those people who are more active, who do present with DVT and may not think that they could have the disease state. So what happens if we don't do anything about it? One of the biggest risks of an undiagnosed DVT is that it could become a pulmonary embolism, which may be a life-threatening migration of that clot to the heart and lungs, leading for difficulty of the heart to function. Also, it can result in permanent scarring or damage to the vein that can lead patients with long-term disability, including swelling or skin changes that may result in ulceration. So that's what we're trying to avoid. And in doing so, you found a new way to get in there and essentially clean everything out. How are you doing that? Great question. There's a new device that was made by Inari Medical called the RevCore system. And for those patients who had stents placed or metal tubes in the vein to support the vein uh, for any compressive illness or scarring of the vein, well, we had very few options for opening up those stents when they failed. And this device is essentially like, uh, as, as the image showed on the screen, uh, a large, sharp egg beater that can be inserted into the vein in a minimally invasive fashion to remove the chronic material that may gather. And for patients who had occluded stents, which are hundreds of thousands of Americans, they had very few options prior to the use of rev for opening the stents in a way that would restore flow and alleviate their symptoms. It's always amazing to me when uh, you know you talk about this device being a, a larger type device, but we're getting inside of a vein here. I mean, we're you're large in scale, perhaps, to some other devices that are super tiny. Yeah, it's always impressive to think about how large our central veins actually are. And what we really needed and didn't have was a device that could operate anywhere from 6 to 18 millimeters in size to clean out these stents. And once they occluded, uh, they really were a large volume of material that was difficult to mobilize outside of the body. It's, it's fantastic research. I'm glad that you found a new way to go about this. Uh, it sounds like for people, like you said, who already have those stents in place, um, what tips do you have for people to avoid coming to be in this situation in the first place? Well, the most important thing you can do is regular surveillance. If you do have a venous stent or any stent for that matter, make sure you follow up with your physician, engage in regular ultrasound or imaging studies to ensure that your stent is not failing and it maintains its patency and maintain your regularly scheduled visits and medications that are prescribed. And last thing, if you don't have that stent already, uh, ways to just avoid getting DVT in the first place? Uh, like you mentioned before, staying active, making sure you're up to date with all your medical and health screening, avoiding smoking and other medications that predispose patients for being hypercoagulable or more prone to developing clot. All right. Good common sense advice there and a great breakthrough at the same time. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Stephen Abramovitz is the chair of vascular surgery at MedStar Health. Thanks so much. Thank you.